afternoon, everyone. It is uh, day 21, uh, Church in the Time of Quarantine, April 6th. Uh, not a whole lot interesting happened in history this day, as best I can tell, or at least the websites I went to to check on that. Not a whole lot interesting happened. Something happened with Napoleon, but I think every day of the year something happened with Napoleon. So, uh, so no fun historical facts to pique your fancy, or anyway, to give to you, whatever it is. Um, we're, we're history free today. Uh, it is Holy Week, and uh, it is a very strange Holy Week, but it is Holy Week nonetheless. So, um, you know, we'll have Steve Jones and I talk this morning. We're going to try and figure out how to do a little uh, Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday service with some music and stuff like that. So, um, it'll be, uh, hopefully, be nice and at least feel a little bit normal. Um, so, I'll, more details on that to follow. And, um, yeah, so which brings us to trivia. Uh, yesterday, the periodic table didn't seem like the periodic table is a place a lot of people hang out. Uh, the question was, what, uh, what element on the periodic table had the shortest name? Uh, we had one right answer, uh, which came from my daughter Meredith. So she got it right with tin. Tin is the shortest element on the periodic table. So... I think we'll leave the periodic table for a while uh, and go to something more exciting. We'll go to movies. We'll do some pop culture because that seems to always always bring people in. So here is today's movie trivia. So in the movie Die Hard, what is the name of the skyscraper? So the Bruce Willis movie Die Hard, the first one. I think there's like 37 of them by now. But anyway, the first Die Hard, what's the uh, the name of the uh, the skyscraper? Uh, if you can know the answer to that, send it in, and uh, you will you will be internet famous. With all however many hits we get on here, uh, we'll we'll know we'll know you. So, well, Holy Week. Um, I thought what we would look at for um, for the next few days is there are readings. If you look on the the lectionary, there's readings for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday of Holy Week sort of thing. So. Look at those readings, and the readings that come up uh, today um, is something known as the Servant Song from uh, the prophet Isaiah. There are uh, four of these Servant Songs, um, some say five. Uh, well, if you look around the internet, you could probably find someone to say anything. They may say there's 35 of them, and they're written by the Illuminati. But uh, generally speaking, there's four of them. And in the readings, uh, we'll go over three of them this week based on the readings, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then um, Monday, Thursday. The readings change, and so we don't get the fourth servant song. But um, we'll take a look at those today, and we'll have the first one today. A lot of these, uh, well, the interpretation is there is this servant. Uh, in most of Jewish interpretation, they, they say this servant is the nation Israel. There have been some interpretations that say it's a specific person. Uh, but for the most part, it's looked at as the nation of Israel. Christian interpretations look at this and say, ah, this servant is Jesus. They are prophesying about, uh, about the coming Messiah, and so this servant is Jesus. And if you, if you read it, um, it's very, uh, you know, you, you see a lot of, of that in there, and actually you see that in the New Testament writers, the Gospel of Matthew, as we read through this one today, You'll probably hear some overlaps with stuff you've heard in, in Matthew's Gospel that somewhat, uh, well, quotes more or less uh, bits and pieces of this, uh, this servant song that comes from um, Isaiah 42. Uh, we're going to read verses 1 through 9. Uh, verses 1 through 5 are really what's considered the, the servant, uh, servant song, but uh, our lectionary calls through 1 through 9. So we will uh, go through all nine. And a lot of this deals with the idea of this servant um, who, for Christian circles, and I, it's very fair to say, um, Jesus um, will come uh, and establish justice on the earth. So that, uh, that's what we're going to talk or read through today. And uh, so without further ado, let me begin. Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I, uh, whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. 
Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spreads out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth, I tell you of them. So reading from Isaiah 42, 1 through 9. We'll end today uh, just uh, with the collect, because uh, there is a collect for Monday in Holy Week. So uh, we will end with that. So let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Talk to you tomorrow.